Every time a plane touches down, a quiet miracle happens beneath your feet. A half million pounds of metal and fuel meet the ground at highway speed. The cabin trembles, the engines roar in reverse, and the whole aircraft surges forward before slowing to a crawl. Inside, passengers breathe a sigh of relief, already thinking about their luggage or the line at customs. But down below, 12 to 20 small black tires are doing the impossible. They look absurdly tiny against the body of a jet that stretches longer than a blue whale. And yet, those wheels bear the weight of a building, over and over again, without complaint or collapse. How can something so small endure so much? To understand, we need to zoom in on the few seconds of flight that decide everything. The landing. As the aircraft descends, the pilots start preparing the landing gear. Hydraulic pistons hum, gear doors open, and thick steel arms extend like the legs of a mechanical bird. In the cabin, you hear the whirring and clunking under the floor. That sound signals the moment of truth is near. Seconds later, the nose lifts slightly, what pilots call the flare. It feels gentle to you, but it's a violent ballet of physics. The plane, weighing hundreds of tons, is slowing from 180 miles per hour to about 150 miles per hour while dropping toward the ground. When the main gear finally makes contact, the tires go from zero to full rotation in half a second. That sudden acceleration is so extreme it would shred a normal tire instantly. The smoke you see on touchdown isn't danger, it's rubber vaporizing in a heartbeat as friction spins the tires to life. So how do they survive it? It starts with the material science hidden in every layer. An airplane tire isn't a single piece of rubber, it's up to 25 separate layers bonded together under heat and pressure. Engineers use a blend of natural and synthetic rubber reinforced with nylon and Kevlar cords, then wrap it around aluminum steel cores stronger than many car frames. Each layer has a purpose. Strength, flexibility, heat resistance. A single tire on a Boeing 777 can handle roughly 38 tons of load, and a full landing gear set can distribute that weight across up to 22 tires. If one fails, the others pick up the slack almost instantly. That redundancy is deliberate. Safety through numbers. Even after hundreds of landings, a plane's tires aren't thrown away. They're retreaded. The old rubber shaved off. A new layer applied, and the tire baked again like fresh bread. Each one can be reborn seven times before it's retired. It's cheaper for airlines and more sustainable for the planet, too. What's inside the tire matters just as much as what's outside. It's not ordinary air, it's high-purity nitrogen gas. Oxygen, the main component of air, reacts dangerously with rubber under extreme heat. Landing gear brakes can reach over 500 degrees Fahrenheit, and oxygen could make the rubber brittle, or worse, flammable. Nitrogen, however, is calm, it doesn't burn, doesn't expand unpredictably, and doesn't freeze even at 40,000 feet. Another hidden advantage, nitrogen leaks more slowly through rubber molecules. That means tires stay inflated for months, saving maintenance crews time and airlines money. It's one of those unglamorous efficiencies that keeps global aviation running smoothly. Airplane tires are inflated to about 200 psi. Yeah, that's about six times the pressure of a car tire. That's actually equivalent to being 450 feet underwater, where, honestly, human lungs would collapse instantly. This enormous pressure keeps the tire rigid enough to carry its load, but, you know, still flexible enough to absorb shock. At these pressures, overinflation isn't really the danger, underinflation is. If a tire loses even a small percentage of pressure, its sidewalls flex too much, generating heat that can cause a blowout. That's why crews check tire pressure constantly sometimes using infrared guns that measure surface temperature to spot hidden problems. And yet, despite such extreme conditions, the margin for error is razor thin. A single tire failure can unleash thousands of shards of rubber and steel. That's why engineers design each wheel assembly to contain an explosion, directing fragments downward so they can't pierce the fuselage. During landing, those first few seconds are just brutal. The tires don't actually roll, they skid, 
Imagine for a second, dragging a spinning bowling ball across sandpaper at 150 miles per hour. That's the kind of stress every wheel endures. Friction burns a patch of rubber off the surface, which is why runways have those dark stripes of melted material. To minimize this punishment, pilots sometimes use a technique called pre-rotation, touching the wheels to the ground lightly for just a moment before the full landing, letting them spin up a bit before the full weight settles. It's subtle, but it really helps reduce wear and heat. When the aircraft finally slows to taxi speed, the tires have already absorbed energy equivalent to a small explosion, and yet they're ready to do it all over again on the next flight. Before any tire is approved for commercial flight, it's, well, tortured in laboratories. Manufacturers mount them on giant steel drums that spin faster and faster until the tire literally explodes. They're tested at four times their rated pressure and twice their rated speed. Only after surviving this kind of abuse do they earn certification. Some are pushed beyond 300 miles per hour before bursting, and honestly, the footage is spectacular. Rubber shattering like glass, energy releasing in an instant. These failures teach engineers how to make the next generation even stronger. Every improvement, new cord material, better bead design, more heat-resistant rubber, comes from watching one fail safely in a lab instead of out on a runway. Even with all that precision, accidents happen. Tire failures have caused runway excursions, aborted takeoffs, even damage to engines. When a tire bursts on landing, debris can ricochet into the wing or fuselage. That's why ground crews inspect every tire after every flight, checking for cuts, bulges, or discoloration. If one shows damage, it's replaced immediately. No patching, no temporary fixes. A single weakness could cost lives. You might have seen dramatic videos of planes landing with sparks flying from a bare metal rim. Those landings look terrifying, but they're controlled. Pilots are trained to keep the damaged wheel on the runway for only a split second, distributing weight to the remaining tires until the plane stops safely. It's not panic, it's protocol. There's another danger most passengers never imagine. Water. When a runway is soaked, a thin film of water can form under the tires, lifting them off the surface, a phenomenon called hydroplaning. At that moment, braking becomes useless. The plane simply slides forward, skimming on liquid. To fight this, engineers groove runways with thousands of narrow channels that drain water away, instantly. A grooved runway can cut stopping distance by nearly half. Pilots say the difference between a wet, grooved surface and a smooth one feels like night and day. On grooves, the wheels bite. On smooth asphalt, they float. It's tempting to think, if tires are so important, why not make them bigger? The answer is simple, weight. Every extra pound adds fuel burn and cost. A Boeing 747's landing gear already weighs more than a family car. Making the tires larger would mean reinforcing the entire undercarriage, adding thousands of pounds. Engineers constantly chase the sweet spot between strength and lightness. Airplane tires are the result of decades of refinement, just big enough, just strong enough, and no heavier than necessary. So next time your plane touches down and those tires screech against the runway, remember what's happening beneath you. Each tire is carrying the weight of a house, spinning fast enough to power a small generator, heated nearly to boiling, and still perfectly balanced. They're the unsung heroes of flight. Quiet, sturdy, invisible from your window seat, yet vital to every safe landing. They endure brutal forces so passengers can scroll, yawn, or clap when the wheels finally hit the ground. And when the captain says, welcome to your destination, those tiny tires have already done their job with precision worthy of applause. If you enjoyed learning what really happens under a 500-ton jet, tap that like button and share this with the friend who always claps at touchdown. And before your next flight, watch our deep dive into how runways are designed to keep those tires gripping the ground. Because the next time you land safely, you'll know exactly who deserves the credit.